Welcome, Wildcat Nation. I am your host, Megan Johnson, bringing you another episode of Podcasts. Joining us today is Culver Stockton's previous goalkeeper, who now has an amazing opportunity to play in Germany, Nick Luciani. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm very good, Megan. How are you? I'm just dandy. <laughs> I'm stuck in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I know, eh? Aren't we all? <laughs> so you're in Canada right now, right? That's your home? Yeah, currently um, I'm still back in my hometown in Canada, yes. Okay. And who would you say has the best weather, Canada, Germany, or Missouri? Oh, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> Honestly, though, um, being when I was over there in Germany, um, the weather, I didn't really like it. I think actually Missouri had the nicest weather. It stayed warm the longest for me. Okay. It's already, it's too, it's already too cold here in Canada. I've been wearing jackets and sweaters for too many weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 70 yeah. in Missouri, but you, it's starting to get cold, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, no, it hasn't been like that for a few weeks now already here. So, yeah, I like Missouri weather. Okay. Well, let's start from the beginning of your journey. First of all, how long have you been playing soccer in your life? Oh, oh wow. How long have I been playing? I'm, I think almost like 20 years now I think I started playing when I was about three or four years old and I'm 23 now okay so yeah just about 19 20 years wow that's a long time so when did you come to Culver Stockton yeah uh Culver Stockton I came 2016 I was freshman just a year out of um out of high school at the time and I kind of took a break before I went off to college okay so you've been to at Culver all four years yeah, that was my, um, that was, I didn't transfer in or anything. I was a true freshman at Culver. Okay. And how has your soccer experience been playing at Culver soccer? Um, my experience at Culver was actually a lot better than maybe expectations were, just because obviously being a kid um, from Canada, like not knowing much about the American, like college athletics system besides like the big d1 like um programs that you see i didn't really know what to expect going to a small school uh and i kind of just took a chance on it because the previous coach um blake ordell kind of just told me to come in and try and like fight for a spot i didn't even know if i was gonna play but luckily i kind of paid my dues that um that my freshman year and I sat behind the starting goalkeeper Rob Jones and then I was lucky enough to step in my sophomore year and start and from there have a very long career with Culver from my sophomore year all the way to the final game in my senior year mm-hmm. so you'd say you'd- and um yeah like it was it was probably the best choice I made within my soccer career in the sense of wanting to be I wanted to be like some big D1 athlete that probably wasn't an achievable goal at the time I was trying to go to college and play and um, I guess I felt like I was settling but realistically I was actually benefiting my career um, being able to play so young into like my college experience I even got playing time as a freshman mm-hmm. and then just starting for three years consistently with I think I only stepped out for about four games total in my career from sophomore to senior year so just having a ton of games under my belt having playoff experience and like like achieving um accolades and things like that at Culver really progressed me as a goalkeeper like in three years I I progressed a lot quicker than probably what I would have if I settled somewhere and you know maybe only had a year to play realistically okay All right, so now that we have your background information from Culver, tell us what this new team is and how you got this opportunity to play in a different country. Yeah, um, what an interesting story I went through getting to this opportunity. Um, So the team I just signed for for this uh, coming season is in the sixth division in Germany. It's called um, the Landesliga Bayern. And my team has a very German name of SV Wattenspor Aschaffenburg. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to try to pronounce uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so how I came to this, I actually, I got lucky enough to sign to an agency um, in the final semester at Culver. So uh, in January, I got invited out to a combine with a company called Ottawa Pro Sports Management. Um, and I went out to a weekend combine for them. Um, there was a lot of aspiring like college kids and kids looking to transfer between schools and I was kind of there more to look to sign to play after and I impressed well enough that they wanted to kind of work with me we were just in early stages at the time so I wasn't fully signed but they said they would keep an eye out for me and kind of if an opportunity came about then they would offer it Mm -hmm. and luckily um at that time about two weeks after um being noticed by the agency um we were back at culver probably two two weeks into semester three weeks into semester and they called me having an opportunity in finland for me but at that time i wasn't really able to go just due to the fact of school and other complications so i rejected the opportunity and from there it wasn't like that there wasn't going to be another one, but they weren't as optimistic because obviously I was a, um, a small time player in the college system. Mm -hmm. And then from there COVID hit and that kind of put a stall on everyone. So from there I was training a lot during lockdown. Luckily Mm -hmm. I have a very small um, squat rack type thing here in my basement. So I could do some workouts and, I have a little patch of grass in my backyard. So I was training really hard. Um, And then actually this past August, I went out to Ottawa, Canada, where the agency's based out of. And I basically was out there for the month training with all of their pro players and college players. Everyone was just kind of prepping for season and we were just getting ready. And then from there, um, they were just still really impressed with me. They said they saw improvements. So we kept going forward. And two weeks later, I get a call that I'm going to Germany. So I think I was, I got a call on the weekend and 10 days later, I was on a plane flying to Frankfurt, which is like the closest city. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I was on a week long trial in Germany. Luckily, um, club liked me enough that I got to sign for the season. And I was there for one more week, um, had some visa complications and things like that. So unfortunately I'm back in Canada because of that. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably be heading back out there in the next month or so to just keep going. But until then, yeah, really, I think with out Culver letting, giving me the opportunity to play so much and then OPSM kind of vouching for me, I don't know if this opportunity would have even have came. It's, it's pretty tough market to get into. So I was very lucky and fortunate to have anything. Right. So this isn't like just a club or school. This is like, the real deal right yeah this is the real deal like some of my ex-teammates have played like in the first division in Poland and Germany there's some like serious talent I was not expecting when I got there so um that's crazy it's, yeah it's not considered a full-time full-time professional but definitely is professional in the sense um you know there was a contract there was money involved and everything and mm-hmm. all that fun stuff that you get when you make it to the next level Okay. So when is their season? So we're currently in season now, and then we have a winter break in December, and then we kick back off in January till about March, April time. So like the Europe, it's all like the European season. So anywhere in Europe basically runs from like September till I think April or something like that. Okay. And have you been able to watch any of their games? Before yeah, I've been keeping. Um, yeah, I've been keeping up to date with them. Um, obviously, I got to know the players pretty well, and I was lucky enough to meet in uh, an American player there. Who so he's a obviously well spoken English speaker. He can speak good German as well. Mm-hmm. So we're staying in very close contact, and um, you know, following everything I can on Instagram, things like that. Watching the videos back of just how season's going. Mm-hmm. I'm still kind of getting to feel a part of the team, at least being so far away. I'm in very close contact with everybody. So we're all just kind of hoping and waiting for uh, the visa to uh, 
be sorted out as quick as possible, but mm -hmm. I'm still able to, you know, cheer on my team and call them my team. So that's pretty exciting for me. That is good. Do you have to learn German at all or can your teammates translate <sighs> for you or do they speak good English? I, the English, you know what? I've had good experiences with all my teammates speaking some sort of English. And I asked um, some of the guys who speak better English than others, what's the deal of guys maybe being nervous? Like everyone seems very nervous to speak English. Mm -hmm. And that's what they said is that um, most people are. They think that they, there's like um, – like an embarrassment that they feel if they mess words up, which I told them that like, I would like, I would never judge them for that because they're trying. And I went over there not knowing anything from their like language. Mm -hmm. So I've taken, um, my coaches have asked me to kind of learn some basics. So I'm starting to learn some German. I can't pronounce a single thing right now. <laughs> I can, I can, I can kind of like read it and I can hear it and understand it a little bit. Like, um, stuff on the field left right push pass all that but it's such an interesting language and I really I can't use, they use like they're like the throat to talk a lot and right. I can't use it I don't know why but I'm struggling right now to learn it but I'm trying my best yeah German does seem hard with all the interesting pronunciations especially yeah, the, whole, the whole team name you told me I was like wow I think that <laughs> I think that took that must have taken me the whole two weeks I was there plus the week prior before I left to try and learn it. And like, once I was there and hearing it, I kind of got it. That's mm -hmm. the only bit of German I can speak. So I can at least say I spoke something right now. Mm -hmm. So does your team play other countries or do you stay within Germany? So we just stay within Germany. Um, and the, like, uh, the league that we're in is about I want to say like 15 to 20 teams within a three and a half four hour radius of me so it's not too bad of the on the travel side of things um you can end up traveling further so countries like Germany have like they're called domestic cups so cup games we can be traveling as far as I don't know probably like to the west side west east side of the country um because I'm all, almost all the way on the west side so it kind of just depends. Everything stays though within um, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, but they have. There was um, prior to me getting there, like an under twenty German national team keeper. So there could be national team players within the squads that we play, and our team don't have any. But you never know. Maybe younger guys. Um, but everything's within Germany, within a pretty close range too. So travel's not too bad, which is I'm kind of used to being at Culver five hours to Baker I remember doing on a Wednesday night. Okay. So is there any way we can watch you play? Like is there live streams or websites we can go to? We're like, wow, let's see what Nick's what Nick's doing today. Yeah. Um I don't know. It, I guess it all is gonna depend on the club, uh the home field that we're playing at and what happens. There's talks about our club doing like um live streams every game mm -hmm. potentially maybe next season because right now we're in um we have a very good chance of being promoted to the next division mm -hmm. um you can follow sv vattenspor on social media there's lots of updates that they give on um on their social medias it's all in german though so it's a lot of uh just looking and guessing with and hopefully they show scores as much as they can mm -hmm. um if there ever it was video up, I would be sure to uh, let T Tom know over there because I'm sure he's going to want to know about it. He's been asking me right. as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to try and stay as active as I can on social media, just promoting the club because they've given me my first opportunity. So I'm very grateful of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess if you follow me or the club on social media, that's how you could kind of know where I'll be in Germany and how my careers going moving forward with them all right so what's your handle uh my handle is underscore nick luciani n-i-c-k-l-u-c-i-a-n-i -I -I, all lowercase all right we'll write this down <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome all right so last question to wrap it all up what are your plans for the future that's a good question um i try not to 
look at myself too far in the future because mm-hmm. I'm someone who kind of can get in their own head very quickly. So I keep my goals pretty short. I could say though, within the next year, I'd like to be at my club um, starting consistently. Mm-hmm. That's my first goal. And from there is making a big enough name for myself, either in Europe or Germany in the lower levels to move my way up through the ranks there into lower division professional soccer. But honestly, an end goal of mine is coming back to North America and playing in um, potentially the USL or uh, Canadian Premier League. Okay. Those will be those are my biggest ambitions, and those are kind of long term goals in the next few years. Um, for me right now, and for like uh, the agency that I'm with, our goal is to get me playing, and hopefully from there make a big enough impact that teams from North America will start kind of recognizing the name a little bit in the sense that they'll then give me a chance. So I would love to, you know, in three years time, be saying I'm back within the Midwest, even playing close to Culver and all that. And Mm -hmm. back in America, kind of having friends and family be able to watch me play every week. So that would be amazing. So for now, you live in Germany, right? Yes, I will be moving to Germany come probably late December. Will be um, I will be in Germany for at least four to five months, probably, okay. and potentially longer if I want to stay and you know resign for another year. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that sounds so amazing. I'm happy for your opportunity, and I wish you the best in everything that you do. So that thank you so much. Up. You're welcome. <laughs> that pretty much wraps up our interview. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Nick. We will definitely be cheering you on from Canton, Missouri. Everyone, make sure to follow Nick on Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> all of the above social medias. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm your host, Megan Johnson, and this is it for your latest episode of podcast.